Okay, hey, I'm Coach Leonard from North Carolina Wesleyan College. I am here today with Tiana Bellamy, and what we're doing today is we're going to uh, start introducing our runners and our athletes with everyone. And today we're starting off with our female team and we're starting off with Tiana Bellamy. So can you introduce uh, yourself and tell us a little bit about you? Hi, I'm Tiana Bellamy. I'll be a sophomore at Wesleyan College this fall. I major in business administration entrepreneurship and I'm from Wilson, North Carolina. Okay, I know you, you're from Wilson. You spent your senior season at Hunt High School, but previous to uh, there, you came from Japan. And could you tell us a little bit about your why and uh, how long you were over there? Yes. Um, my dad was in the Navy for 31 years, and he just recently retired. And during those third, well, 31 years, we lived in Japan for nine of them. During those nine years, I went to school at Niles State Kennedy High, and I ran track and cross country. So, you know, you ran track and cross country. Um, we take it seriously over here, uh, the sport of cross country and track. Uh, and the United States, track and field is the number one participated sport in America. Did Japan take it seriously? Yes, <laughs> they did. For our cross country season back over in Japan, it was really intense. But at first for my freshman and sophomore year, I didn't attend Far East, which is our conference championship. I attended it for my last year there. And it was intense because everyone was just ready to win. Same for oh. track. So how many people were on your cross country team over there? How many people? If you if had I to get. This not, might not be a precise number, but there should have been around like 20 or 25 I for cross country. And then for track, we really, we start out with like a hundred kids or so. Wow. This, that's not how it ends up when we like get to like far east season okay? okay that's not how it is they come to one meet and then oh. after that some of them drop uh, well so. it's like that in america too you know but they everybody thinks that they want to run and then when it's time to work hard you know yeah. it kind of, some of them kind of fall out uh-huh that's um, yeah so uh so what made you choose north carolina wesleyan to run at and go to school? That's a good question. Because at first, I just chose Wesleyan because it was closer to Wilson. It was closer to home because I've been away from it for nine years in a completely mm -hmm. different country. Yeah. So I thought Wesleyan was the best choice because it was closer to home. And sure. now, since I attended, I realize it is the best choice for me because everyone there is just really enjoyable to be around. Well, I know. I get to watch you guys from afar. I see you guys close, interact with you all, and then when you walk away, you know, I get to see you guys interact. And uh, I love the way that all of y'all interact. It's, it's really fun to watch and be part of. Um, so looking back at this past season, or actually any of your um, seasons that you have been running, can you reflect on a memorable running experience, like either at practice or, or in a race, maybe you were running. Like one time I fell in the mud during a cross country race and I was, I always remember that. Do you have something that you kind of, something sticks out for you? Yeah, it was my last year at um, Natalie Kennedy Kai when I ran track as a junior. We were in our four by four. And the race before that was a 200 meter sprint. Okay. Our fourth leg got injured, which meant I had to run in fourth leg when I normally run in first. Okay. 
that was the most stressful <laughs> moment of my life because when you're a fourth leg runner, mm -hmm. there is so much pressure and commitment because you never know what could happen at the last second when you get the baton. No, no. And everybody's pulling for you. And if you're behind, you know, go, Tiana, go, go, go. Yeah, that's yeah. what happened because we had to change up our whole entire routine like order and add a new girl in there that hasn't been running the 400 for the whole entire season. She never ran the 400. So how did y'all do that day? Oh, we got gold, but oh, okay. yeah, we still got first, but, but it was traumatizing because <clears throat> our first leg was in third place. Then our second leg got two places behind and fifth. When they got to our third leg, she was in a crowd of people while the first leg was already handing off the baton when she was coming down the last straightaway. Okay. And I had to get the baton, and I have my fourth leg teammate that got injured on the side say, Tiana, you better go. <laughs> you gotta go. She's like, you know your times. You can run, you can catch the first leg chick. And I was just like, okay, I'll go. So I got the baton. And the first leg girl was on the first straightaway in the middle, I guess you can say the first 150 meters mm -hmm. of the 400. And I don't know how, but I caught up to her and passed her. And I just kept going from there. Good job. I just what? kept running and I was scared because when I reached the final straightaway, one of my guy teammates told me, you better keep going. She's right behind me. But I was like, uh, who's right behind me? And I crossed that line in first, and everyone was so happy. And I was like, thank God we got gold. But I was like, Coach, did you get my time on the last 400? He was like, no. He oh, man. He, like, we all thought we weren't going to win, to be honest with you, because everything changed. We didn't even think we'd get top three. But so this was a, you got a gold medal. Was this at some type of championship? Yes, it was Far East Championship coming down to us and another team. So if we didn't win that 400, overall, we would have gotten second place. And after three years of winning first, it's hard to go to second. No, I hear you. All right. So um, that's pretty interesting. That's fun. And I'm sure you'll remember that. So this past year, uh, we went to the Disney Classic, and we were on ESPN. Um, we, I know the guys, we sat and watched it um, at the hotel. Um, you know, because we were, I was in the room with the guys at the time. Um, I didn't sit and watch the race with the girls. I think I had some of y'all in the office individually. Um, but did you guys go back and watch the, the the show and see you guys running on TV? Um, I'm not really sure we did. To be honest with you, after that race and during it, it was just so much fun. Really? It was really amazing to run at the Disney race because, it. I mean, even though it was a race, it felt so much enjoyable because at the start of the race, we weren't, like, stressed out about, like, getting first or anything. And even if we, like, made the worst time in our records, we would yeah. still feel like we accomplished something when we crossed that line. Did you hear the music while you were running? Yes. <laughs> I enjoyed that. I was like, I can listen to music while I run in a yeah. race. They were playing uh, Let It Go, Let It Go. I thought that, they played that during the girls' race. I thought that was interesting. Um, so, so what has been your favorite part of your cross-country and track? I know we only ran one track meet this season, yeah. but what has been your, out of your running experience, what's been your favorite part so far? Out of my running experience, it would probably be the traveling and practice. I mean, I know everyone thinks, yeah, practice is always terrible because it's just, I don't know, it's practice and sometimes it's hard to like when you go to college, it's hard to manage practice and schoolwork. So, yeah. yeah. But to be honest with you, practice is basically the only outlet that some people have. Like me, I spend mm -hmm. all day in the classroom. 
and I need to get outside and do something. So having practice is really beneficial for me because it's like an outlet. Yeah. Yeah, I think we all need that outlet in some way. And, you know, you think about it, we practice 90% of the time. So you have to enjoy practice. Um, so looking back at this season, how would you evaluate your season? Um, well, to compare it to my high school season, I'm really not up to where I used to be. But I think that's just because of a transition. But still, you're off. you didn't run your senior year in cross country. Yeah, I didn't run. Don't don't make the same mistake I did. Run run during your senior year, please. Yeah. So uh, my goal for you is to have a huge jump between your freshman year this year and your sophomore year. I'm I'm expecting you to be running really good times, and I. Expect my goal for you is to be an all-conference runner next year. And that's that's how I see you and I, where I think you can be a lot better. Okay. But, yeah, taking that year off has kind of hurt, hurt you a little bit. But this track season, you were killing it. I don't I, know if you – did you feel the transition like you were getting better? I did, but the sad thing was the first me. I mean – I get my time. My time was literally the same time I ran kind of like as a new freshman running the 400 the first time. Yeah, but you jogged the first 100 meters. You jogged the first 100 meters. <laughs> I know, and that was my own mistake. And I was just like, I can't believe I did that. I started off so slow. <laughs> I know. Me and Coach Wyndham were sitting there right beside each other, and we were like, me, Coach Winham, and, and Coach Fraser were like, what in the world is that girl doing? She's jogging. I know. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I mean, I really don't know what happened. Yeah. I can't we'll, explain it. We'll get it better. I think I, my, I thought you were going to run probably a 59 this year. and I mean, that was my goal. Yeah. I, I think if you have a good cross-country season and then go into your track season next year, because we're going we're gonna to transition smoothly right after cross country, we're going to be running some indoor meets next year. So indoor track. Yeah, so we won't have any lag time. You'll be able to go. You'll be in conditioning, in conditioned, and we'll go straight into your time, uh, season. And I, I think you could probably run 57 easily next year. But we'll see. Um, so next year, what did you – do you have any goals? Like, have you, do you – have you thought about what your – time goals are or like position goals like all, all conference first second third honorable mention have you even thought about that at all um well for track i thought about getting back to my regular times which is a 59 mm -hmm. just setting just setting kind of like regular limits for right now because mm -hmm. i know i can go past them but for now i just need to hit a target area before I reach for something higher. Yeah. So long term, my long term goal for you before you graduate is to be at the national championships in the 400 meters. And you have the talent and you've got the work ethic to, to, to get there. We just got to just put everything together and get you back into shape. You know, you had that one year off, it kind of threw you off a little bit. And you were turning that corner during track season. I mean, you were killing your teammates at practice. <laughs> and, you know, when during cross country, they were beating you. And then you kind of started to turn, tables started to turn where you were beating your teammates at practice. And they were working hard too. They just, you'd had to hit another gear on them. So um, how would your teammates describe you? I think they would probably describe me as quiet because when I first came in there, I didn't, I'm always quiet at first, but oh, as yeah. I got <laughs> to know me, I think they realized I'm kind of unique and a little bit different because I remember one time that we were just sitting at the lunch table and they were asking me about me living in Japan and this is when um, I first met. And I was like, I haven't really been around, I guess, like Americans really, because um, Japanese people are more, they're not confined, but they're just, 
soft, I guess you can say. They're mm. kind of just soft, even though they have like a lot of personality, while Americans just shine. They just naturally shine. So Americans are shy? No, they, they're not shy, they shine because- Oh, Americans, shine. Yeah, Americans mm. have like a lot of personality and mm. they're just ready to let it loose. <laughs> and I'm just like, huh. So I just didn't really know how to be like, let myself go until like a few weeks later. And then they understood that I might be quiet, but I still got a little bit of personality. And they'll jump right at you and say, hey, Tiana, what's wrong? Everything okay? And, yeah. <laughs> and they'll jump and ask direct questions. Um, has you, have you had a teammate is, has there been a teammate that has been a positive influence? I would say everyone influence? on that team. <laughs> everyone. Because, mm. I mean, I didn't really know what to do when I first got here. Mm. So Alyssa's been a real help, and so has everyone else. Because, I mean, i I only been in America for a year. I went to high school, and that's like just high school. And then I'm off on my own the next year. And I'm just like, what am I supposed to do here? I can't war like go out freely like in Japan because here you have to know how to drive while in Japan you can literally just step on a train and go anywhere you want. Yeah. So, you know, you know, we've always tried to make our program where it's like a family. So because we all know everybody's coming from different parts of the world, different states. And we want everybody to come in and, you know, have somebody there to, you know, um, put their arm around and say, hey, look, come with me. Let me show you the way. And did you feel kind of like that when you got here? Like somebody, they were embracing you? Yes. That's good. Um, you know, I get to see you guys, in, you know, on my couch hanging out and talking. And uh, I enjoy y'all coming in and just hanging out with me. Um, so, uh, so we talk about um, a little bit about you. Do you have a favorite running movie? No, let's see. <laughs> I watch anime and oh read manga all the time. So, to be honest with you, if it has anything to do with like real life humans, I oh probably don't know. Unless oh, it's like man. DC or Marvel, okay? Oh. I probably don't know. I remember you saying something about uh, some, um, what's that, those conventions? Those, yes. And I said you had like a month, there was a, one you wanted to go to was like a month out. And you said you didn't have time to make a, an outfit. I'm like, you got a month to make it? And you said, it takes longer than a month. It does. <laughs> it really does. Cosplaying is so hard because you have to start from scratch. Like, seriously. You can't buy it's an outfit? Not, I mean, it's just, it's not right sometimes in the <laughs> anime community to just buy an outfit unless it's like Halloween. But when it's anime, it's, its own little individual culture of itself. Yeah, I hear you. I've never been to one. I, I used to live in San Diego, and they have the big convention down there, and it would always be sold out. I could never get tickets to it. Um, have you been to a big one? Yes, I went to the one in Raleigh last year, and we're trying to go to the one this year, but the thing is, with this virus going around, mm -hmm. it may or may not happen. That's in May, isn't it? Or June. Yeah. May or June. May. Like that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, do you have a favorite pair of running shoes? I'm a big Nike guy. What about you? Um, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, but I think it's like Aces or... Asics? Yes. Asics? Those. Okay. I really enjoy running those. They're just, they have um, memory foam um, installments on their shoe, and that just feels amazing to me. Okay. What, what kind of spikes do you wear? Uh, Asics? Um, no, those are actually a Japanese brand, so I'm mm -hmm. really not sure if you're going to find them in here unless you order, order them offline, okay. even though I don't know that brand. <laughs> I <laughs> don't know that Asian brand. Did, did you use the same pair for cross-country and track? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, 
So what do you do? Uh, well, I think I already know. What do you do besides running? It's probably the cosplay and watching anime, right? Yes, but I don't cosplay. I want to start getting into it, but I don't really have time to put so much of my resources and money into it. So for now, I'm just sticking with anime and manga. Okay. Uh, so I was going to ask you, what are you, do, what are you studying? But I think you said that at the beginning. What, what, what was that again? Um, my major is business administration entrepreneurship. So what do you it's want basically to do? all business classes. What do you want to do when you become a grown-up? Oh, when I, well, to slow my roll at first, I obviously have to get a job. <laughs> but my main goal is to have my own restaurant, recreate one of my favorite anime bars, which is Death Parade. If you have ever seen the anime, I will recreate that exact bar in Japan. And then, I think, yeah. I think probably in a bigger, like a big city, that might be a really big success. Yeah. And my other goal, I wanted to own a company, but I didn't really know what type of company I wanted to own until okay. now. What, I, what is it now? I decided to make my own little anime studio where I can write okay. and then have someone design and productive and merchandise it. Well, cool. That's pretty interesting. All right. Um, so do you have a person that has been really influential in your life and who would that be? A really influential person. I, I actually would have to say all of my coaches and pretty much my family and also my friends, all three of those really influ influenced me a lot because I know they'll give me advice, but they leave the final decision up to me. Yeah, that's good. That's good that you can take different views and then, and then people aren't pushing you in a certain way. You know, you just take all the information and make the right choice for yourself. Um, so do you have anything that we haven't talked about that you wanted to, to say? Or oh, yeah. I got an offer to be the president of the anime club at North Carolina, North Carolina Wesleyan College. Cool. So if you know anyone that really likes anime or just needs a fun after school activity that isn't much time, just a quick session where you can have fun, explore new worlds, please, please come out to the anime club. <laughs> <laughs> during right. our fall, spring, and winter semester. Is that a new club? It's not a new club. It's been on campus as of last year and probably for a few years. I got an email from um, the president a few days ago asking if I wanted to join for the fall semester, and I was mm -hmm. like, yes. Yeah, and he's of course. like, we, we need it people. So I was like, I want to do it this semester, but I got cross country and track, didn't really know how to manage a club in there. But yeah. now I got it. Well, cool. Well, good luck. So we're going to end, all, end up end the session with a joke. Do you have any any jokes? One joke to tell? I, pro I do. I, like, I looked one up and I think this is good, but probably a little bit corny, maybe. Okay. Good. Why can't you take a nap during a race? Why? Because if you snooze, you lose. Oh, snap. That's pretty good. You, here, that's pretty good. Listen to mine. How do you put, how do you make a Kleenex dance? I don't know. You put a little boogie in it. <laughs> <laughs> we both have corny jokes. Well, look, thank you for taking your your time and uh, spending it with me for about 45 minutes. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again in uh, August, all right? All right. See you later. Bye.